Oh, OnePlus, what happened? Hey guys, Raymond here, and I've been using the OnePlus 11 for a couple of weeks now. It's actually the first time I've daily driven a OnePlus device. That's not to say I don't know about OnePlus, I mean, who doesn't, you know? I was in uni when the OnePlus One dropped, taking the tech world by storm with its flagship killer specs and pricing. Since then, they've become a huge name with the OnePlus 3, OnePlus 6, and so on, becoming extremely popular around the world. Last year though, OnePlus seemed to be going through a bit of an identity crisis with the super high-end OnePlus 10 Pro that came out with a similarly extravagant price. Then we had the OnePlus 10T, which cut so many corners to hit a low enough price point, it might as well be a circle. With the OnePlus 11 though, they really did make it a circle, at least when it comes to the camera bump. I mean, look at it. Why is the camera bump a circle in another 10 Pro style camera bump. Why is the glass over the camera bump a glittery finish? And that glass back may look prettyish out of the box, but use it for like two seconds and it's slippery fingerprint magnet waiting to drop on the floor. Basically, I do not like the look of the OnePlus 11, not one bit. It's just so gaudy in so many ways. Maybe it's just me because I prefer sleeker phones like the Pixel 7 Pro or the Galaxy S22 Ultra rather than the more out there designs. Even in the office, it's a pretty divisive design, but to me at least, the OnePlus 11 really has this look that only its mother could love. I mean, at the very least, the alert slider's back. <laughs> if I ignore the back of the OnePlus 11 though, I can at least almost enjoy the display up front. It packs a 6.7 inch Quad HD Plus display with an adaptive 120Hz refresh rate and a pink brightness of 1,300 nits, which is actually quite nice. Content on it is really nice, you know, bright, vibrant, and the stereo speakers are actually pretty decent too. The one issue I have with it though is that edge detection, see. The OnePlus 11 comes with a curved edge display, and for some reason, the edge detection on this is actually pretty bad. I was holding it in landscape mode to watch YouTube, and it would pause every now and then due to this mediocre edge detection. And it was just the same games where I was randomly hitting on stuff when I didn't mean to. Speaking of games, I was a little underwhelmed by its performance there too. The OnePlus 11 has the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor with our model packing 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. On paper, that seems pretty decent, but for some reason I notice occasional dips in FPS and stuttering now and then when gaming in admittedly heavy and slightly unoptimized titles such as Dota Underlords. Its Geekbench scores though were actually pretty great, but seeing as OnePlus has a history of cheating on benchmarking tools, I would take that score with a little pinch of salt. I mean, they have gone on record before stating that at least with the OnePlus 9, they had optimized performance a little bit by reducing performance to improve battery life and reduce heat. Though, I can't say for certain that this is what happened here. In fact, my overall experience with Oxygen OS 13 has been a little underwhelming. I saw a couple of bugs every now and then, such as screen tearing up and the screen rotation locking up too. But I mean, in general, I'm just not a fan of the look and feel of Oxygen OS in general. Uh, but then again, I am a MIUI fan, so... Besides, the great thing about Android is that you can just throw whatever you want over it. It's somewhat disappointing though that OnePlus is only guaranteeing 3 years of major OS upgrades rather than the 4. Battery life though is decent enough if not particularly amazing. I mean, there's a 5000mAh battery here allowing me to get through a full day no problem with my screen brightness about 2 thirds up running all my usual stuff of texting, social media, video, games and stuff like that. I then end up with roughly 30% left by the time I go to bed. I mean, it does charge fast though, with a 100 watt Super Vook charger in the box, though not as fast as the insane 150 watt we saw on the OnePlus 10T. Then there are the cameras. Ignoring the gaudy look for a second, 
The OnePlus 11 brings back that Hasselblad branding with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 32 megapixel telephoto shooter, as well as a 60 megapixel front camera. And in my opinion, at least, photos are actually pretty good. Perhaps not good enough to live up to that Hasselblad branding, but you know, overall, they're pretty solid shots. Colors are usually pretty true to life, the shots are sharp, and the portrait mode actually does a really good job of getting that bokeh effect. In low light, the OnePlus 11 is also pretty capable, albeit a little inconsistent. I had to get the focus just right, or else shots will get way too blown out. Ultimately though, the real make or break for the OnePlus 11 will be its price. Now, Unfortunately, at time of shooting, we don't know yet how much it will cost. But one thing's for sure, it needs to be cheap. At least, cheaper than the competition. See, if I was in the market for an Android flagship, the obvious choice here would be the recently launched Galaxy S23 from Samsung. It starts at 3899 and you're also getting a bunch of nice-to-haves that the OnePlus 11 doesn't have, such as an IP rating, wireless charging, Samsung Pay, and that fourth Android OS upgrade. Sure, it has a smaller flat screen, but for some, a compact smartphone is actually a benefit rather than a drawback. As such, when the OnePlus 11 does come out, I really hope that it's priced at least a couple of hundred below the Galaxy S23, or else I'm not sure if this is worth buying. You know, it's a pretty different OnePlus now from the one we all used to know and love. And the OnePlus 11 seems to be the greatest sign that OnePlus is in a bit of an identity crisis, stuck between making cheaper flagships that appeal to their fan base while also wanting to challenge the more upmarket giants like Apple and Samsung. In the end, just like the OnePlus 11, OnePlus itself seems to be stuck in a no man's land with a phone that's just neither here nor there. Well, that's been my review of the OnePlus 11. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree and what do you think about OnePlus in general these days. Uh, and remember to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification icon if you haven't already for more from us here at Sorajin Chao. Goodbye.